Hey what's up guys it's Zach and today I'm in Illustrator creating a piece similar to something I've done before as you can see I have it set off to the side. Um, I actually do have a video where I created that and I'll link to that and um, yeah so I'm just going for something very similar so I use like the same model just a different angle and everything from the reference photo that I used on the first one and I'll link to where I found all these reference photos and yeah so this video is going to be a little bit longer and that's just because the, I slowed things down only to about 800 times normal speed this piece didn't really take that much longer but I really wanted you to be able to see everything that was happening in this because there's already kind of a video that goes a little bit faster on the other one where I talk about kind of the broad ideas in this and I wanted this to kind of go over more of the exact stuff so as you can see I'm kind of working as you would in a painting I'm trying to get the broad uh, shapes of color in and then I'll go back and start adding the detail and stuff like that and really the main things I'm going to be using is the pen tool I'm using I use the blend tool right there but that'll pretty much be the only time I use that um, so yeah the pen tool I use Pathfinder tools a lot I have a video on the Pathfinder tool I'll link to and I also actually use just the rectangle tool quite a bit I'll end up using that to get a lot of my drips and sometimes I'll go back and kind of render them out a little bit more and add some you know uh, dynamics to the line or whatever but really a lot of times I just kind of put rectangles pointing downward and that's how I get a lot of my drip effects and as far as like people say like I don't see how your lines look so like painterly or ink like whenever I do it it just doesn't look like that and honestly that's just from practice and um, one tip that I say quite a bit is go and find some textures that you like and trace them and figure out how to draw them like if, you, if you're not understanding how to draw it just from looking at something and like you're looking at mine and be like, I don't understand that. Just go look up some like watercolor textures or you know um, oil paint textures and just try to trace them in Illustrator and then you'll start understanding like how those shapes are put together and how those shapes actually move. And once you do kind of have a full understanding of how those shapes do work in natural situations, then drawing them becomes a lot easier and you just kind of like remember a couple of motifs that you kind of use over and over in your stuff and like little tricks that kind of make things look like they're dripping. And the only other big tip that I say like over and over is a lot of things that I use, I don't use at 100% opacity and that's very vague, but I just mean like a lot of my even um, big like you know what I'm saying the big color block that makes the whole shape I'll put that like 80% so you start feeling some of the background colors come through or even some of the background like if I put a gradient on the background it starts showing through and some of the stuff because that's something that really is missing in Illustrator that you do get in painting is kind of layering and people are and myself included are a lot of times are too scared to make mistakes in Illustrator because things are kind of concrete or they feel concrete but really things are super super easy to move around and super malleable um, you can really kind of experiment and with having everything on layers or have, having everything grouped you, you can kind of like experiment and make decisions and kind of layer things on top of each other and if you don't like the way it looks you can kind of either push that farther back in the composition or farther forward or just take it out and that's something that you can't really get in painting so I think if you do take the time to kind of abuse the fact that you can kind of move things around then you can get a lot of cool effects and experiment with a lot of different things just by layering stuff on top of each other because a lot of stuff that I create I don't necessarily know or could even go back and do it again it's kind of just like happy accidents and for every kind of happy accident there's probably like 10 times that I controlled Z or moved it back and forth to kind of like tell how it was going to look uh, so point being is you should really just not be afraid to kind of experiment and just kind of layer stuff on top of each other and just see how it looks because the fact is you are using a digital medium so that does mean you can go back and undo up to whatever the amount of times is and you can't do that obviously in any type of traditional medium really you have to like figure out a way to erase it or paint over it or something like that and you can't just decide like oh shit I should have put the color red before the color orange like in a painting you'd have to go back and like uh, you know what I'm saying experiment with doing that the next time but something like this you can just you know what I'm saying change it up at the blink of an eye and just really experiment with getting your colors right and everything and speaking of layering and everything I'm kind of going into now working on kind of the drips and more of the painterly like stuff um, 
and this once again is just kind of layered up on everything as you can see I keep going into um, isolation mode and I do have a video on that also it's with my Pathfinder video and that's just so I can kind of isolate um, the group that I'm working on or even like layers that I'm working on and that really helps me use the Pathfinder to my advantage and kind of like throw stuff to the back or front and manipulate things like that and once again I'm just layering stuff on top of each other I'm layering highlights on top of those drips um, you know just kind of experimenting like adding highlights and when I do start to go in and add shadows on certain stuff like on the drips where it makes it feel like it's actually part of the piece and things kind of do flow together and I think where the drip kind of effect in vector art does start to look you know honestly pretty cheap is when it feels like it's just thrown in at the bottom or something or away because you don't really know how to finish the composition if you just throw it at the bottom because that's where the picture cut off it's so apparent and everyone sees it like you know what I'm saying and so if you can work um, you know what I'm saying limitations of a picture or you know just even limitations of your drawing skills uh, if you can work those out in kind of creative way like a lot of times I'll have like you know glitch stuff kind of cover up what I can't draw or what I think is drawn badly and honestly that's kind of an underrated skill is to kind of an step back and analyze a piece and kind of figure out what needs to happen and stuff and I feel like that's something you just kind of develop over time because a lot of times especially I know I did this a lot when I first started I just felt like I had to reach out like I had to ask people all the time like what do you think about this what do you think about this and because I couldn't really tell if it was drawn better I couldn't but when people would say things like oh if you you know added more shadows here it would start to look better like getting that input was important because I couldn't really trust my own you know vision of what I was seeing because once like you can get kind of caught up in what you're working on and it's, it's just got the same kind of effect when you go back and look at something and you're like wow well, how did I not see that that face was all messed up when I drawn it but at the time you're so kind of deep into the composition and everything that you don't really notice those kind of huge glaring flaws uh, one good way to kind of if you are kind of struggling with that is to flip the composition um, I think that's a pretty popular tip but it does actually help a lot um, one thing I constantly do is you'll see me zoom out I just zoom out all the time because I want to constantly see how it's looking I want to see what like those changes that I'm making how they actually affect things because in Illustrator you can get kind of caught in the details super easy you can zoom in way too much you can like uh, there's been times where I just draw things and it's like no one will ever see them because they're too small and it's like you wasted all that time on stuff no one can see if anything it just kind of looks all blurred together when you do kind of render it out and export it into like you know a JPEG or something you can't see that stuff so to kind of avoid that stuff and make sure that I'm always you know very aware of what I'm doing and the changes I'm making I do constantly zoom out and uh, I think it's all on um, Windows and Option on yeah Mac I'm pretty sure and if you hold that in the scroll wheel then that lets you zoom out and in very easy like in quickly and that's how I do it so fast um, obviously you can pinch if you're on a trackpad but the point is you need to be zooming out or need to be like examining the piece as you go because you can't really just go in and think like oh, I'm gonna draw it exactly like this and know exact well, I mean you can if you're really really good but a lot of times it takes a lot of kind of trial and error and figuring out what makes the piece look the best and when you do kind of improve these composition skills and stuff like that that's when your pieces really will start to come together and a lot of the um, small rendering things that you know we as creators kind of want to work on all the time like but really it's those kind of compositional skills that really bring the pieces together and start to make them feel you know a lot more appealing to audience rather than just like oh that was drawn well but like I don't really feel the piece or anything like that so point being is you need to be stepping back and looking at your drawing and examining the composition and that's something I'm kind of going to do now I'm going to take it in Photoshop and start to kind of do some of my glitch stuff but I'm really going to be going back and working on the vector in Illustrator too so as you can see um, I drop in a pattern and pretty much I create a smart layer of the image and then I mask the smart layer duplicate of that image over the pattern and that alone does nothing because then you just have the normal image masked out over the pattern sitting on top of the other image but what I do is I add a effect to the top image that's masked by the pattern and what this like I use the waves effect under filters distort 
and I use the square option and what this does is it gets me I don't know just kind of the glitch effect that I'm looking for and pretty much I just build up a couple layers of those and kind of edit it with masks to kind of get a lot of the repeating effects that I'm looking for um, you it's so much just trial and error it, it takes like it takes a long time to kind of get things like looking right as far as in the details details of it because as you can see I just like go on that mask and I just sit there and erase and try to get things like go back and forth back and forth and that's where you kind of can get lost in the detail but it is a quick way to kind of glitch out your stuff and if you place like obviously the illustrator document in that smart layer by double clicking into the smart layer that you created at the beginning then like it, the file is automatically going to update and everything every time you save um, your illustrator file and I make these all the time just for either pieces that I create or just mocking up other stuff and I give these away on my patreon so if you want these files just to kind of throw your artwork in quickly and get kind of a glitch effect or you know you're having trouble kind of getting your Photoshop file to kind of look like you know mine ends up looking like uh, yeah you can get those on my patreon um, I do one every month with a ton of other just kind of royalty free stuff and yeah um, I would obviously appreciate the support but obviously you don't have to or anything. Um, so yeah, uh, I like I said, I do go back into Illustrator and kind of work on things, but this is once again me kind of pulling back in the composition and like figuring out what's going on. Um, I did the Photoshop thing, so I knew what parts are kind of gonna be glitched and I didn't have to draw, honestly, because you don't wanna render out a bunch of stuff that oh, it's gonna be covered up by kind of a glitch effect here anyway. So um, this kind of trees effect is actually something I come up with, it's like, I can't, I invented trees. Um, I, I kind of started doing this when I did a Chance the Rapper piece, and I really just kind of throw this in a lot when I don't know what to do in the background. I just kind of render out um, the silhouettes of trees, make them kind of spooky looking, and let the glitch stuff do the rest. And this is honestly the point in the drawing that I love and hate the most because you can really spend any amount of time really just ironing through the details and adding a bunch of stuff and adding textures and you know what I'm saying? You can just constantly be tweaking stuff, but honestly, at the end of the day, you really just are excited for people to see it. So um, this is really where the detailed detail comes in, but honestly, it's not that important. Like the piece is already done before a bunch of these pieces were added. I'm really just kind of, you know, expanding on things, trying making things look a little bit more drippy and adding a little bit more texture to stuff and depth. But really, there's nothing really groundbreaking that happens here. It's me just kind of tweaking a bunch of stuff and figuring out what looks good. And saving, looking at it in Photoshop. Um, a lot of times, if you do have the privilege to have two screens, um, which I don't always use two screens. Sometimes I'll be like on my laptop making stuff. But anyways, um, if you do have two screens, you can even have the Photoshop document up on the other screen, which I think helps a lot. Um, being able to look at what the file is going to look like and look at your vector really helps you kind of work around anything like glitches that would be there. Or um, like you see here, I'm adding kind of gradients because I know it's going to look cool and a bunch of the glitch stuff. So I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm kind of aware of what the other documents looking like too. Um, but yeah, there's not really a whole lot else that I have to say. It's kind of just like me working. Um, I do draw the moon, which I think <laughs> I think turned out really cool. I don't know why I really just like the moon in this piece. I, I like the way the piece turned out actually. Um, I'll probably more than the first one, but everyone else disagrees, so it's probably just not as good. But um, thank you very much for checking out the video. I appreciate it very much. Um, if you do want to um, subscribe, I would appreciate it. If not, then I appreciate you not wanting to subscribe. Also, I appreciate your choice. But don't dislike the video. That actually does bother me. I don't know why. Don't thumbs down. But yeah, thanks again for watching, and yeah, here's some tunes.